So. The racial disparities in this country don't exist because we've forgotten about them or don't know about them. There are people who are perfectly comfortable maintaining their existence, whether they do so through malice or through ignorance brought about by severe political bias. Doesn't really make a difference to white supremacy either way. Hey, how are you doing, Rush? I'm doing great. How about yourself? I'm all right. Uh, just to be honest, I'm a little bit nervous. It uh, is my first time debating online. So. You don't need to be. I mean, either uh, you win the debate or at the very least you uh, hamper my performance in this video game. So really, there's only victory for you. Oh, perfect. Sounds great. So I guess the question is, where do we begin? Um, do you believe that critical race theory is or is being used to teach in schools? Um, I don't know what critical race theory means anymore. All right, so you want to start from there. You want me to define it so you can think I'm not full of shit, basically? I, j I need to know because, like, I've seen it, I've seen it used to mean, like, everything, you know? I, 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 don't, I don't even know what we talk about anymore when we talk about CRT. Okay, fair enough. Well, basically, it's a lens that looks at race and, I guess, originally law through the lens of power dynamics, basically. Yeah, it's um, no, no. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Basically, the the issue that I have, I guess, is that critical race theory as like a a distinctive academic movement. I don't think it has any sway at all in what kids are being taught. Now, are there conclusions uh, and beliefs that a critical race theorist would agree with that are um that are being taught in schools? Yeah, almost certainly. Yeah, for sure. And additionally, are there um, are there people who will use the term critical race theory to describe what they're teaching? And it's something that like critical race theorists may agree with, but it's also something that people have known about for like a century and a half beforehand. I also think that. So basically, I think that it's probably better to not focus on critical race theory as a term, but more like what things are being taught bother you. Okay, well... Um... It's mostly the tenets that are being used um, that are okay. That are first being taught to teach through, like through the pedagogy, or gagi, or how the fuck you say it, and um, also being directly taught to students, at least, but not directly called uh, CRT. They just basically teach you some of its tenets and explore them and tell you to think like this, as that will basically be how you will achieve a critical consciousness. Yes. Sure. Okay. Well, I don't think they're using terms like critical consciousness in elementary school or anything. But like, so what? What is like? They use in high. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. What's the thing? Sorry, like, what's the thing that like they would be taught that you would take issue with? Uh basically looking through the lens of um, basically dominant narrative versus counter narrative. Uh, narrative how the uh, dominant group uses basically hegemony as a way to keep their dominance and subjugate the oppressor like stuff like that for one also then there's all the whole whiteness crap that you know defines whiteness as like a cultural or ideology and basically tries to get rid kids to uh you know remove their whiteness shit like right. that okay so the remove your whiteness stuff is like almost entirely attributable to the writings of Robin D'Angelo. I don't think that stuff is appropriate to be teaching young people. I think that there's an academic setting where it's appropriate to have conversations like that, but the term whiteness is very emotionally loaded. So I don't think that I like... I totally agree. Yeah, so I, I don't know if that's like appropriate for a... Um, for, for like kids or really anyone outside of academia to be learning about. With I 100% regards to, agree. With regards okay, to the dominant narrative thing though... Um, I don't know. Do you think it's really, like, a big issue to say, like, for centuries, you know, in America, white people use their power to try to keep black people down, and now they're now we're doing uh, that less? No, I think if that's the idea that we're going to use, that is perfectly fine, but what I'm afraid of is people will be teaching that today the not a dominant hegemony or a narrative is still white supremacy. Well... I mean, is it not? I don't believe so, no. So this is the um, this is the concern I have. It seems to be the case with you and with a lot of other people, 
By critical race theory, what you really mean is you take issue with any education which suggests that racism still exists in this country. You know? No, no, I'm I'm sorry, but I think that is a straw man of my position, but that's all right. You do not know my position yet. So it's only right for you to make the assumptions due to all these other dumbass people like trying to conflate a lot of these things. But um Again, I completely think we should be teaching racism. I still think ra uh, racism exists today. I think we should be teaching about, you know, redlining, um, Tulsa, slavery, you know, all that stuff, uh, um, Trail of Tears. And I, we've been doing that in history classes for, you know, decades. I learned this shit when I was in high school in, uh, in Missouri and in middle school. And now I can now live in California, but... Ed. I didn't learn it here in California, but I was only here for two years. But uh, my point is, no, okay. Sorry, I'm... You don't need to apologize for anything. But I just mean, like, the idea... So this, so if I were to take a statement, like, um, like white people uh, use their collective cultural power to suppress non-white people. I think that is a statement that is true today. It, you know, maybe not to the same extent that it would have been a hundred years ago, but certainly still true today. I think it'd be irresponsible to not teach kids that, if anything, you know? Or at the very least, well, that, like, the, the white supremacy is, like, emboldened and reflected by um, the prevailing attitudes in our society. The hegemonic power structure. Okay, well, um... Again, I disagree that it is. Um, I guess my question here is how, in terms, are you defining white supremacy here because it's different than saying it emboldens white supremacy as in you know people believing they're superior compared to white supremacy as the hegemonic system you mean so like to, like to best... what extent like do i think that white supremacy still exists in this country yeah like what uh what methods or what's uh what reason do you have behind that you know well, there are some explicit bits. I mean, there are quite a few people in this country who just flat out, honest to God, don't believe in interracial marriage. That is a thing that yes, exists. Okay. I mean, there, so, yes, so there's is, like 100%. obvious stuff. Right. So there's obvious stuff. Yeah, but sure. I, I'm not talking about the obvious white supremacy. I'm talking about, again, the, uh, the way that critical theorists would explain yeah. or anti-racists so would I'd, explain white supremacy. I'd say the, crit uh, the uh, criminal justice system. I'd say the fact that the Republican Party denies the idea that the criminal justice system is racist is a form of white supremacy because the, the method has changed. It used to be you could just, well, it's like the Southern strategy thing, right? You used to just be able to call black people the N-word. Like that, you could just do that. That was a viable political strategy. But nowadays you can't, so you have to abstract it. And one of the ways you abstract it is by oppressing and marginalizing people of color through non-essentialist systems. So you're not anti-Hispanic, you're anti-illegal immigrant. And you just so happen to attack a lot of non-illegal immigrant Hispanic communities in the process of being anti-illegal immigrant, you know? You're not anti-black, you're just very anti-drug use. Or you're, you know, anti-having your pants down around your ankles, or anti-rap music, or anti-this, or anti-that. Okay. And it, it turns into, like, well, what are we really talking about here, you know? Okay, fair enough. Well, then let me ask you this. Um, is it fair to say that that is the dominant hegemony when half the country completely disagrees with that? Uh, if the systems are still in place, then yeah. It's true that, like, more people than ever before are opposed to those systems, but the systems still exist, right? I mean, it's like... So the even if like 98% of people thought the police were racist, if the police still continued to affect racist outcomes, it wouldn't really make much of a difference, you know, because it, it, it'd, all, it'd all be still happening, you know? Well, that is, that's another sort of debate I have. I don't know if it's smart to be calling it white supremacy compared to be calling it, for example, uh, black disenfranchisement. I think the reason why it's hard to necessarily call it white supremacy is you'll find other um, minority races or ethnicities that either do just as well in terms of like you know um, police like uh, and criminality and aggression towards them that they do white people and as well as you'll see uh, ethnicities who are doing far superior to more white people or to white people on average and that goes with uh, you know income housing. Well, the only uh, education, reason education, you know, most, socioeconomic. Well, that aspects. wouldn't be like the only marker of um of white supremacy, though. So we have I, like the I agree the model minority thing. So most for the longest time in this country, Asian Americans were significantly poorer than white people. 
the reason why yes. that demographic has changed recently isn't because like Asians have suddenly become like super uplifted or anything. It's actually just sure. because um uh it's actually just because like there's been an influx of immigration into this country. Immigration, yeah, of educated and uh you know, of uh, educated immigrants basically come here to get the higher jobs and stuff like that like. And I agree that that is why, but doesn't that sort of beg the question is if this country is supposed to have a uh, white to or black to white ascendancy, as is the claim by made, made by critical race theorists, then why would we even be allowing for other races to excel far more than white people? Well, it's not like that simple. It's not just because a country is like full. Well, first of all, for a long time, we didn't. I mean, with like Black Tulsa and stuff, like the Tulsa um, yes. massacre, okay, I, I, we would I literally understand. just like I'm not, I'm not yeah, yeah. That past history. Right, we if would literally just history, like I'll take completely... their shit. Yeah. But exactly, like, exactly. Right, right. But like, but that's, now... that was past, and I'll admit, past is racist. The past was white supremacist. I don't know if it's fair to consider America that way today. Right, but it's and it's not it's not always that explicit. I mean, for example, you know, um, with regards to like, um, so the existence of some ethnic groups that, on average, do better than white people isn't an argument against the idea of white supremacy because nowadays it's much easier to affect white supremacy through like broad systems that target poor people but the people who are poor are more likely to be poc than it is to just like explicitly target ethnic groups you know it's a really complicated yeah, but system but, but you what... understand that that also affects poor white people as well maybe not as equal you can say it hurts uh, poor people of color more mm -hmm. but yeah. you'll agree that it, it hurts all the poor people um and so in this sense, it feels if like I was you are poor, doing, like the def if, if I was poor, Sorry, though, I'd ahead. rather be white than black. I'd rather be a poor white man than a poor black man. On average, my life is probably going to be at least a little bit easier that way. Yeah, yeah, I, I wouldn't necessarily agree, but you could say the same thing about, um, say, like, a, would you rather be Asian or white in America? You know, in terms of um, the advantages that you would get. Again, you'll have a lot of advantages as being just the majority and, you know, having majority privilege but in terms of um well would i be like in a would i be in a higher or lower position chances are I'd be in a far higher position being born either east asian south asian and again i understand this in all this well case, the only the only reason that on asian, average it it is well the only reason Sorry. that asian people have the the returns that they do in this country is because of like chinese immigrants who come here for education it's not really yeah, like exactly. representative, Chinese but, 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 but that's but what, what you're just, but what you're talking about okay. right now, these aren't representative of like the same set of starting conditions that you might see from people who have lived in this country for a long time and are like no, very firmly a part of the mesh of how this country works. So of agree, course, so what you're essentially, more? what you're essentially saying is like, I would rather be this group because this group was more likely to have come into this country as a wealthy immigrant. But that's not a reflection of how this country treated that group. That's a reflection of the starting status before, you know? It'd be like a country could be super, 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 like, anti-black, but the only black people in that country are, like, wealthy foreigners. Like, for example, China. China and Japan are both pretty racist against black people. And as a consequence of that, it's not like they're rushing on over there to go live there. The black people who do live in those areas tend to be disproportionately wealthy because they're usually Westerners. Um, who treat it more as like a tourist luxury than anything else. But you wouldn't look at that and say like, oh, it's good to be black in Asia, because that's not true. It's just, that's a, a group with a different set of starting circumstances. Okay, but w would you agree that it is good to be Asian in America? For, I don't, like, again, on average. On average, white people are treated better than Asian people in a couple of ways. The model minority <laughs> oh, well, stuff, yes, okay, positions there, of power. There, I'm, not, I'm not denying that, although I disagree with the whole position of power pos or like idea, because you're basically saying that a small minority of white people who do happen to be in power reflect all of the white people who are not in power. No, but it's not a coincidence like no that white people are normally that, in power. Well, yeah, very well just could be due to the fact that white people make up a majority of the country. But, but I understand that's not, that's not the case. Power, yeah. Yeah, well, it, yeah, well, at least in terms of CEOs, uh, I believe uh, Asians are actually disproportionate. They make up about 30% of all CEOs. Well, yeah, all because these CEOs a lot in the well, we, we, yeah, for the same reason that I described before, the Asian CEOs aren't exactly like they came, their family came over here 120 years ago to work on the railroads and they worked their way up. A lot of those okay, Asian no, CEOs are that. part of like American Chinese business ventures that like they were, 
the, but so, but, but, but I'm saying like that's not really re re that's not really reflective of the way this country treats those groups, you know. Um, why do you say that? So because, what, what would be reflective of the they're... way we treat uh, those groups? You'd have to take a look at people in this country and then compare them to other people of like starting positions. So black people and white people in this country, most of them have lived here for multiple generations. Most of the black people in this country have lived here longer than the white people. I mean, if they came back with the slave ships, they weren't like part of the Polish or German immigration waves that came later that make up a ton of the white ancestry in this country today. It's like, a, you know, a whole different ballpark. So with regards to like people of like circumstance, how are they doing? How are they being treated generally? Like what is the, what is the benefit that they're receiving from the society in which they live? And the answer you'll find is that in populations that have lived in this country for a long time, that aren't like diaspora, they aren't like immigrant groups, they, for the most part, overwhelmingly, white people are doing the best. Uh, if you take a look at black people, in spite of having come here uh, before many of the white people, uh, they're in far worse positions. The Asian communities that came here over 100 years ago, they tend to be in worse positions as well. So when I look at all that stuff, and then you take a look at all of the ways in which money tends to flow in like a, a majority white communities, and that capital tends to cycle in certain racial groups, it, the bias becomes increasingly clear, you know? Okay, fair enough. So a lot of it seems like you're defining, I guess, white supremacy in the same way that uh, systemic racism can be defined, and that's basically through uh, disparities. Would you say that's right? Yeah, but there's, there are disparities that are deliberately maintained. The, um, yes, okay. the racial disparities in this country don't exist because we've forgotten about them or don't know about them. There are people who are perfectly comfortable maintaining their existence, whether they do so through malice or through ignorance brought about by severe political bias. It doesn't really make a difference. It's white supremacy either way. Where are the flames? Okay, fair enough. Um... Well, again, one of my issues with the concept of white supremacy in the first place is I feel it is ultimately unfalsifiable, and it basically is built off a lot of post hoc reasoning and confirmation. Um, I understand like that you might disagree with that. Uh, I do um, disagree with that, but like, but like, how though? I mean, if you take a look at the criminal justice system, you can see there are biases there. There's no getting around yeah, that. On I, basically I every agree. level, too. I completely agree, but again, um. There are plenty of other minorities who do not, in terms of just the uh, you know policing and incar uh, incarceration, they match the same with white people or even do a little bit better. So in that sense, would that still but be maybe white supremacy that's just... or would that just be black racism or black disenfranchisement? Well, white supremacy doesn't mean that they have to like beat out every minority group on everything in every way. It's more a reflection I... of broader patterns. White like uh, like even well, there have been that's the that's the problem. Like it's too broad of a definition at that point where you can literally put almost anything as evidence and then just well, say, you know, on. I the, can ignore things that goes against that evidence. When you you're know, that, talking, that is basically unfalsifiable. When you're, well, it's not unfalsifiable. It's just a broad problem. And that's usually why when you're talking about like policies, you don't say, I want to do this because it'll fight white supremacy. It's usually a little more specific than that. I mean, white supremacy can be reflected in people's individual behavior. It can be reflected in the biases of our elected okay. representatives. It can be reflected in uh, institutions that maintain a power differential between white and non-white people without anyone actually intending to maintain it. There's a lot that can okay, go into I, I that. I get that's the idea. Okay, can you give me an example of individual behavior that would express white supremacy? I, I mean, I guess... Because I know there's like like a typical Oaken list of like you know white supremacy culture. I don't know... I, You'd probably think that shit's bullshit, I believe. Yeah, I'd say being anti-BLM. Um, I'd say being anti, which plenty of the people in the country are Ooh, voting for Trump. You'd say I'd being anti-BLM. Okay, anti-BLM as in the whole, the movement or the um, the group? The movement. Nobody cares about the group. The only people who care about the group okay. are people who watch right-leaning YouTubers. The movement was tens of okay, millions of enough. people. And yeah. I completely agree. I, I, I have no problem with the movement. I have some issues with the group who basically, you know, created it and some of their ideals and like, you know, but that's that's different. We don't have to talk about that. But okay, uh, what else? What other attitude or behavior would be white supremacist? Uh, white supremacist. I mean, I, I guess like one of the obvious ones would just be being explicitly racist. But yeah, I, I, I don't mean be... like that. I mean the subtle, uh, uh, implicit ways that. 
perpetuate white supremacy. I, I think the BLM divide is a pretty large and clear one because there are plenty of people who don't think themselves racist who probably say stuff like, you know, fentanyl Floyd, like, oh, George Floyd was a thug, he deserved to die, BLM protesters burning down buildings. That's an element of white supremacy that a lot of people don't talk about. They said the same thing about the civil rights movement, too. The thing is, with something like George Floyd's death and the subsequent BLM riots and, and protest, I mean, even just the riots, even the worst elements of it, the injustice that is being protested against is so severe that I think anybody who actually cares about civil rights would have to accept that what happened after George Floyd's death was a natural, if not defensible, then at very least like a permissible outcome, you know? If you're going to shut down every civil rights movement because like there's violence after, then like, oh my God, there will never ever be a civil rights movement. That's that's like, it sure, happens okay. at like all of them, you know? Sure. Okay, do you think uh, George Floyd's death was due to white supremacy? Um, yeah, it, it's whether directly or indirectly. It could have been directly if Chauvin was racist, which is totally possible. I don't think there was ever any element of um, racial bias that was proven in the death, so I can't say that with any confidence. <laughs> But subtly, the conditions that George Floyd lived in, the position that um, that Derek Chauvin found himself within, the rules of force okay, yeah, that Derek I, Chauvin yeah, engaged in, stuff this, like that. The structural system that he's in is already uh, white supremacy in itself, therefore it led to his demise, basically, what you're yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, in, in like a broad, stochastic way, you know? Yeah, sure. Okay, so then what about, uh, like, you know, Tony Tempa? He died basically the exact same circumstances, except he's white, so... Yeah, this stuff so affects white people, that, too. That, a lot of ways, a lot of the... Well, then, then if, if that affects white people too, then are you saying that all police violence is white supremacy? Uh, is no, that then you're defining? Then what do you police, mean that it... When police Sorry, violence ahead. manifests in a way that reaffirms white supremacist outcomes, that would be a product of white supremacy. But white supremacy hurts all of us. White supremacy was how the police and the um, the, the, the politicians implicitly justified a lot of the behavior that cops engaged in. White supremacy is how we had redlining and it's how we had the drug war, both of which led to the massive crime spike leading through to the 90s. Um, white supremacy was how broken windows policing ended up being one of the like um, like default policing behaviors and it's how over incarceration really kicked off. It's also how we have a lot of imbalanced rules right now with the use of private prison systems. All of okay, these things can again, affect white people gosh. too, but they were kind of done as part of a broader project to hurt black people. It's like how sexism can hurt men. Like the idea that- Yeah, I, I, I get that's the idea, but it still yeah. seems again, like way too broad of a definition to the point where you can say that the deaths of almost anybody by the police force can be a symptom of white supremacy. Well, can I not say- could I not say that the reason why the police force in America is the way it is, is because of white supremacy? Um, yeah, you could probably say that. Yeah, that'd be my argument. I, though, I would I give you, I'd give you that. I, okay, I mean, yeah, um, and if you, if you accept that, well, like, and, if the reasons why these things happen are because of white well, supremacy, okay. then... In, in the sense that in the past, it very much was the case. So you're basically saying is, is the typical argument that the past system that was created was meant to be white supremacist and because the systems are the same today they are still perpetuating white supremacy well, still today That's republicans do not want black people to vote for example um the anti-voting laws that they've passed uh the way they have talked about blm the way donald trump would fearmonger about blm you know talking about it like uh they're gonna invade the suburbs or whatever that stuff is pretty explicit and current white supremacy you know the language of like the evil mad black people are going to storm into your white neighborhoods and attack your women it's pretty much just like birth of a nation rhetoric you know it's just yep. slightly modernized Completely. okay you know what um, i mean I, I know what you mean all right well I, I don't think i'm gonna convince you about like white supremacy being uh unfalsifiable in the way it's well, no, used I, I no i want to talk that's... i want to talk with you about this uh, don't don't uh, okay, uh, uh don't move out uh, so okay fair enough i was gonna try to go get more specific into what we were talking about before but we can oh, try to oh sure i this. thought you were saying you were about to leave no no it's, we can talk more i just oh, say no, like no, no, the, no. i don't think it's non-falsifiable i do think it's really really broad you know like imagine if you, you understand like, that why oh, sorry go ahead i don't mean to interrupt it's like patriarchy too i don't know what your opinions are on feminism or whatever but with regards to patriarchy like almost everything about modern life is structured in some way around historic sexism 
the modern family unit was based around the idea that women should be expected to be uh, uh, domestic and docile and take care of children. Um, yeah, that's the argument. Yeah, yeah. And so, like, you could say, like, this is patriarchy and describe, like, almost everything accurately because yeah, it is in that, some way tied. Um, what the thing, like, maybe it's, it's because I, you know, um, I went to college for psychology, so I had some basis of, like, empiricism, you know, because mm -hmm. social psychology and social sciences sometimes do that. I just feel like, I, and I understand they're not using theory in the same sense that, uh, like, you know, uh, theory of rel relativity is a theory, but when you have a theory that can that is so broad is, um, or vague that it can encapsulate anything, you know, you have to say like, you know, shift it one way or say, oh, hey, even though this nest, like, I was wrong about this being white supremacy, but the but the reason for this isn't white supremacy is actually this. You can just find a lot of different excuses or ad hoc uh, or post sorry post hoc justifications to basically prove anything is patriarchy well that's that's and again, true i'm not gonna oh, no Sorry, i just want to say if your goal is to pick apart everything in society and say like well this is racism and this is racism you would be both true and also unhelpful you would be saying something which yeah. is correct but useless you know the but real you know, that's that is what critical theory does well, like, that is the whole well, point crit of critical theory you're describing the base work of critical theory like critical theorists yes. don't get together and they're like everything is racism and then they nod and they're done no it's... i understand did they see all the systems of power that perpetuate racism but then they use the, the same reasoning that you do that the systems were already that way so then the systems are, are gonna be racist and then you get to that same robin d'angelo concept it is not well, well, that well, racism let's not bring robin, robin d'angelo is a filthy liberal let's not bring her into this um, okay, but she is a critical race theorist. She, a lot I of think... people call themselves critical race theorists. I think the term is becoming increasingly meaningless. But so, so the issue I have with this is that I feel like broad terms should be used to describe broad things. So with regards to like white supremacy, I think the following statements are reasonable and responsible. You know, I think you should be able to say this, like white supremacy is present in our nation. It has existed historically and exists contemporarily. Um, there has always been a struggle between people who wish to maintain the power of white people and people who wish to promote equality uh, among people of all races. And white supremacy is the system we fight against when we push for the latter. I think that's a fine okay. thing to say. I think. Okay, so do you think liberalism perpetuates white supremacy then? Um, in because that is also another CRT claim. In, in some ways it does, because a component of liberalism is capitalism and capitalism and other class-based yeah, yeah, metrics yeah. of separation is the main way that you get away with like race neutral racism these days. You know what I mean okay. when I say that? Like so, I'm not yeah, racist, yeah. I, I'm just attacking poor people, but all the poor people are brown, you know, like that kind of thing. Okay, yeah, uh, fair enough. Um, but like, so Robin D'Angelo, I'm pretty sure is a liberal, but uh, critical race theory is, is fairly explicitly like a, at least a Marxian influenced perspective on these issues. So I, yes, I it imagine is, yeah. it, it's a... neo Marxist, you know? So, postmodern but, uh, neo Marxist. You... It is exactly postmodern neo Marxist. Uh, I know a lot of people don't like that, but I think it is true. And if you studied critical race theory, that's, uh, you know, immediately obvious. So, um, uh, I don't know if you agree with that. Do you? I do not. Uh, but that's, but that's okay. We're, we're, um, we're okay. on the cutting well, edge here. Could anyway. you... Exactly. Do you understand why I'm saying that? That it is postmodern neo Marxist? Or do you think oh, I, that because I, they're I, a contradiction, they, they can't be put together? I understand what you mean when you say that. Um, it, it, though I still disagree with it. So with so with regards to like what you can teach kids fairly or whatever, I generally like I could be wrong on this, but I'm pretty sure for the most part, like when when the kids are being taught this stuff, it's not like it's not like they're being taught, like, you know, uh, liberalism is the foundation of modern racism. You know, the world is a struggle between black and white or whatever. It's usually pretty uh, basic it, stuff. Yeah, but the, the fact that it is basic is almost more harmful because they cannot fully get the nuance. And they won't fully be able to understand the difference between saying, oh, hey, somebody is you know, racist or perpetual racism, not because they are white, but because of whiteness. I don't think most kids are going to be able to, you know, see the Well, like I said, I don't the think the there. whiteness thing is appropriate in those contexts, so I won't defend that. 
But like, what's wrong with the, what's wrong with the statement I gave earlier? You know, white supremacy existed historically and continues to exist today. You know, there are people okay. who will reaffirm white supremacy as a way of suppressing minorities. I mean, it's it's okay. true. I'll, I'll, it's not I'll, false. I'll tell you why it it is potentially dangerous. Um, even though I think again. I see where you're getting at. I don't think it's completely true. And I think by stating that this is the case, I think you're doing a lot of disservice to kids. Um, for example, like you know, if you use a different um, tenets of critical race theory together, then you are basically teaching kids that, uh, all these black kids, that they cannot, uh, sorry, not that they cannot succeed. That's an oversimplification but that everything is set against them, is specifically set for white people to succeed uh, and succeed from their subjugation. If it would teach, say, for example, um, interest convergence, was, then they would be telling kids that, oh, hey, anytime the white people are trying to do something for the benefit of black people, they're only going to be doing it for their own uh, benefit, and ultimately only if it'll leave them at top and the bottom. I really I don't like think kids are being taught these things. Okay, they're not being taught the interest convergence, but I think they are being taught, and I have evidence of this in terms of I can show you um, a curriculum, like basically the California Ethnic uh, Studies curriculum. Is and that, a lot of the curriculum... Is that college, or is that... High school. Okay. Yeah, you can send it to me, I guess. Okay. Um, if you want, I can just, can I just tell you what to Google? Or do you want me to send it? Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, sure. Okay, just Google, um, yeah, California Ethnic Studies uh, Model Curriculum. And in this, okay, so again, like, so you think that it's okay to say, pe tell people that uh, this country is, you know, white supremacist for a number of reasons. So you agree that we should be teaching basically critical theory to kids? Or do you I still don't know what that? critical theory means anymore, but I do think that it's totally okay to tell high school kids this country's racist. Because it, cause it is. Okay, I mean, I don't enough. want to, like, lie to them. Or... No, listen, that's the thing. And if I really felt, okay, I think, I think there's a lot of racism in the country. I still think calling it white supremacist isn't necessarily true. Um, I understand where you're coming with it. I just, I just think it, that is still an oversimplification. I think, you know, the actual Marxists happen to be more right even though I'm not a Marxist myself, I don't agree with Marx, that it is far more of a class issue than it is race. And I well, think wait, we're hold, wait, hold on. race. Marx also wrote on race issues. It's true that class is a metric. Um, so a couple of things. Oh, wait, there are a couple of points here. Hold on. So first of all, while it's true that many of the ways that racism is enforced today are through class issues, there are many ways in which they aren't. So criminal justice system disparities, uh, implicit bias, um, police like pulling people over more likely, more often if they're dark skinned, that stuff has nothing to do with class, you know? Um, yeah. Additionally, and here's another critical one, okay? Often people will um, affect class-based discrimination by pulling at racial dog whistles. So I can give you an example, the welfare queen thing that Reagan did, okay? Now, the whole, like, like coaxing up the image of, like, a black woman in a Mercedes, like, driving off with, like, lobster that she got with her EBT card or whatever, it was super, super, super harmful to the push for welfare and, like, basic subsistence uh, income in this country because Ronald Reagan was able to tap into a racial bias that a lot of Americans had and use it to promote an anti-poor agenda. Now, without targeting racism, you can't meaningfully push back against that kind of propagandizing. It's important to recognize, even if we're just attacking people for being poor, we need to understand why those things can be tied into race, why race can be the enabler, like the catalyst. No, I get where you're coming from i still think that there's a overemphasis on the race and i do agree that race is a actual variable that has an effect and same thing with racism i just disagree with at least uh, critical race theories overemphasis 
on race? I, I mean, it's just a theory uh, of analysis, right? Like, it's not just... Ra like, critical race theorists don't ignore the class thing. Most of the people who believe in critical race theory are themselves, like, leftist leftists, like, socialists. Yeah, so. I agree. They don't ignore it. And again, like, they're all, most of them, you know, they believe in inter intersectionality, but a lot of the times, at least throughout their their paper, it's mostly just lip service, unless they're specifically like, but, you know, the black feminist critical race theorists, and they're more it, heavily I, focused on that. I don't know what you mean by like lip service. If if we're teaching like high school kids stuff, I imagine that like the course would mostly focus on ethnic studies because it's because like they usually tend to segment that stuff. If you want there to be like inclusion in academic coursework for like class analysis in high schools then i would literally blow my fucking load like if that could be implemented that would be amazing if we could get sociology classes and like proper critical theory courses taught in high school as electives across the country that'd be fucking incredible well that, that is what is happening in california well so that's you great be happy about that yeah i mean it makes people more under like knowledgeable on these issues right uh, uh yes to an extent i i Again, I come from a psychology background, uh, so a lot of the ways I view it is basically is they can ultimately become very conspiratorial in their thinking and basically start seeing it, racism, or sexism, all these places where it may not be. But like, where would it not be? Like, where? What claims where? are they making that are an overreach? Oh, okay. For I'm not sure for patriarchy, but I can tell you for like white supremacy. Mm -hmm. uh, like uh, what Oaken would say, who's basically the person uh, that most of these schools will generally cite when they talk about uh, white supremacist culture. Mm -hmm. And this is the shit when you know you get that uh, objectivity is white supremacist or perpetuates white supremacy. Um, Does so that stuff get cited to like students though? I, yeah uh, really but like really like objectivity is white supremacy is this like yeah maybe it's fucking a, stupid I, I get it but like but in a couple that's, that's my issue uh, sorry go ahead i disagree if that's being introduced in a high school environment i don't know if this is representative of like the broader push for critical race theory you know well it's really representative of anti-racism and anti-racism is at least this strand of it is steeped in critical race theory, but I've same thing never, with critical the race pedagogy. Only time I ever heard of that thing, the um, objectivity is whiteness, was in a, a Smithsonian info card that got ratioed online by the left and yes, the it right. Did. I saw yeah, like, but it is also part of the Oregon um, equitable math. Um, thing that they were just about to pass in California too, but thank God they didn't. And that was the whole shit I was saying, basically focusing on getting the right answer, perpetuates white supremacy and, you know, uh, focusing on uh, empiricism or the, you know, of the written word is white supremacy. Uh, yeah, so I, 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 I would need to... Not just that, but like fear, um, they say fear is white supremacy. Uh, denial is white supremacy. So if you disagree with them, you're being white supremacist. Wait, hold and on. the right to comfort okay, is wait, white supremacy. Okay, wait, hold on, wait. Okay, so for the Oregon thing, it says it's a virtual micro course in math equity that teachers could sign up for. Not well, students. yeah, I, um, yes, it was. It's not teaching the students this. It's teaching the teachers so they can teach through this critical lens. Isn't but isn't that very different? An, an elective micro course for teachers is pretty different to Oregon students are being taught this. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. My issue is, you know, going downstream, are they going to be taught the same thing? But you know, we can stick with the California ethnic studies curriculum if you want. I, I so I, I, I mean, if, if you want me to like defend these ideas, I've read enough to understand them that basically they're the. I don't know if I would necessarily call it white supremacy, more like cultural supremacy. Um, there are sure. some ideas. Eurocentric supremacy? Yeah, there are ideas on con the construction of our thought processes that are um, culturally influenced. And maybe there are some ways in which we have expectations that aren't like um, 
perfectly in line with other cultural biases. I don't know if it's really that big of a deal, though. Like, and nowadays, today, assuming that everything's being taught well, I don't know if, like, minorities are being excluded from math because of the white assumption and objectivity. So it seems maybe maybe a little dumb or maybe a little myopic to focus on. I'm not going to deny that. I just, I just, I wonder how much of this panic is, like, hyper-woke white people wanting to virtue signal how not racist they are by creating and attending, like, conferences for each other where they explain how the way they clip their toenails is racist and they just go home feeling really woke maybe yeah, this, they have like a phase a where they wear do. like the africa pattern hat you know what i mean what's it called the africa hat it's like the flat <sighs> it's like a don't upturned even bowl I know what you're talking like about plaid yeah 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 and they do that for a bit and then that's it maybe well okay but my worry is that a lot of these people are going to be the ones who are teaching the teachers and telling them how to view the world and basically be instilling like a race consciousness or critical consciousness in the students. Because that is specifically the goal of the um, ethnic studies program is to foster critical consciousness. And again, you know, that is basically just teaching them to see the world through the way a critical theorist would. Well, you know, well, I, agree. well I agree with that because I like critical power. theory, you know? Yeah, I know, I'm sure. So you, you would love that. But I'm just uh, but saying can, so. But can we agree that there is value in teaching young people that there are biases in the systems that we live? Because for the longest time, we've taught children that we live in a meritocracy. Our system is equal. Our system is equitable. You have an equal chance of succeeding as long as you work hard. Not only is this an objective lie, this is a dangerous lie because it perpetuates the idea that there are no biases, stigmas, or sets of discrimination in our society, which isn't true. It obfuscates the problem. It hides it. It, sure, it I, allows I cover. That. So isn't it good to yeah, teach most... children that that's not true? We do live in a biased no, society. We do live in a biased society, and that doesn't... I guess it's... If we are teaching kids that this country is complete meritocracy and... Uh, anybody who succeeds is because of their own, you know, great in intelligence, then I agree that that is a flawed way of viewing the world. Ultimately, I think it's a little, if I had to choose one or the other, the, uh, you know, it's a perfect society. And if you succeed on your own merit is because of your own merit compared to the entire system is rigged against you. They, have, they will fight tooth and nail to keep their power. Well, wait, hold on. I think you're, I think you're biasing it a little bit. I don't think you say they like this is being brought about as a conspiracy. What if it's not like Critical there's race not what if it's really conspiratorial? I don't think it's conspiratorial to say we live in a white supremacist country. But what if they don't that's, raise this? That's conspir not the conspiratorial part. Well, then, then what if they Sorry. just say we live in a society that is still white supremacist in some respects, and that's bad. And to those of you who are like people of color or whatever, there are going to be institutional biases against you. Those are all factual statements. They're not conspiratorial. And I don't think they discourage people from trying hard either. Mm, well, I disagree with you there, but I do okay. I, I do agree that this is something that we can potentially teach appropriately. Uh, if we teach them in that sense that like the system, like, okay, the system very much used to be white supremacist. There are still lingering effects of that white supremacy it today. It still is though. But, like the whole Trump thing, like, the anti-BLM rhetoric that he used was pretty explicitly white supremacist. That guy was president. We're not, like, past it. There's a whole political party. Yeah, that... and he was the most controversial president like we've had in, in, like, three lifetimes. Yeah, but he was the... So... Wait, wait, wait. You can't say it's not a problem anymore just because the president who did it is controversial. Biden is no, that, controversial. That's not my... He was the president. Sure, that's my point. But my point is it's... Tens of it's millions of people voted It's white supremacy, him. yes. And millions and millions of people voted against him. So I don't know, it's safe to say that's still the dominant uh, hegemony. I think it's safer to say that it's a hem hegemony that has lost lots of its power and is still trying to maybe uh, gain some power back. Um, but I don't think it's fair to say it is the current dominant uh, meta narrative or hegemony today. What institutions... Uh don't favor white people over black Apologies. people. Um, oh, oh, over, okay, just white and black people? 
Let's just say white. Let's just say white, white, just say white and black people. people. Yeah, like just to keep it because critical race theory. Um, well, it doesn't just talk about white and black people. Like uh, just to speak on that. Like, um, like what institutions were you, would you rather be a black person in? I feel like overwhelmingly, it's like always easier to be white. You know, maybe if like I'm trying yeah. to think, man. Um, but again, I feel like it's less. That doesn't necessarily make it white supremacist. It, it definitely makes but it's the same, it. It's the, it's the same with Hispanic people, though. It's the same with Hispanic people. All else equal. Yeah, all else equal. If you're facing, because Hispanic and black people together make up like the vast majority of racial minorities in this country. But like, if you're talking about, um, give me an institution. Like, what would you rather be? Hispanic, black, or white? Like, almost always, with all else being equal, the answer is going to be white. Talking criminal yeah. justice, if you're talking like your career, if you're talking about like interacting with the police, it's it's almost always you're going to want to be white. You know, if you add Asian in there, almost. it's a little bit muddier because the Asians are considered like the model minority. So they're not considered as much of a threat by the police and they're treated with maybe a little bit more decorum than other ethnic groups. But in a lot of those instances, it still seems like I mean, at best, it's going to be like a coin flip. And at worst, you probably want to go white, you know. Uh, yeah, okay. Again, I don't necessarily disagree with that. I don't think that's a, just because that is the case that I'm rather be white than say black, that means this nation is white supremacist. You, cause there's a, I guess maybe it's because there's a lot of baggage in the term white supremacist. Um, a lot of the times, at least it's used, it is also connoting, uh, connotating some sort of actual uh, action that's keeping power, you know? Well, the, I so mean, it, again, it, with it, the whole Trump thing, I mean, I have to... Uh, it, sure, okay, yeah, fair enough. Trump, if if there's a better example that you you know you could ever use, it is Trump in this case. Yeah, but, just, but um, I mean, what is, I, I don't know, it seems like if the definition of white supremacy were to be simply, you'd rather be white than anything else here, that seems like a pretty clean and concise one, right? Even if it's a product of historical factors, it's still affecting the world today. And it's not like there aren't active racists today. I mean, yeah, yeah, it's still out there happening. It's just if you if your argument is that the dominant paradigm is towards liberal progressivism, that that is the dominant paradigm, then my answer to that would be that's probably true, but that's probably more of a cultural influx than it is an institutional one. Even if our culture is catching up to progressivism, maybe our police, our corporations you know, our, our, our political structure, it's going to take some time to catch up with that. And even if it did, like, is a society in which about 30% of the population are white supremacists not still kind of a white supremacist society, you know? I don't know. It really depends on how you draw that line. Yeah, and I, again, I guess my issue again is just with the, the broadness of the term that basically can make you use any example, but I guess we can just drop that since... That's a broad problem. There. It is a broad problem. I don't think focusing on white supremacy is the best solution to that problem, though. Well, you should focus on I racial think... disparity, right? I mean, and the fact yes, that there are 100%. systems with okay, bias. 100%. Uh, 100%. But that's another. the thing. I, I, I disagree with the idea that any racial disparity is you know, a result of racism. I'm sure you don't think that's the case either. You, uh, I don't know. You might say that that is a... Um, you know, I guess showing racism. Would you say that that yeah. any disparity shows racism? Uh, I think or is that racism significant. How, how would you define sig it? Significant disparities between different racial groups um, usually are indicative of some kind of underlying bias. Yeah, I mean, okay, it, it, so I, the dispa like between like big disparities, like the very clear data disparities from people who yeah, would otherwise sure. be in the same position. Yeah, because that usually indicates okay. there's something that's leading that difference to exist. It's either environment so, or genetics, and if the, it's enough. the environment, it's racism, and if it's genetics, then, I mean, I don't believe it's that. But. <laughs> but, okay, um, so I'm, I know you don't like to, or you, your reasoning for bringing up minorities is that because they already came here educated, and therefore they already do better, but you know that, again, that there is a huge gap between white people and uh, Asian people and Nigerians and Ashkenazi Jews. Well, in terms of with, all of the socioeconomic factors, that is like a far above, like clear 
uh, disparity between them. Yeah, because you're people. subselecting for the be... communities that have done well, but the but the overwhelming well, majority. Well, even that's why we're that's why we're talking about averages. Okay, so on average, Asian or Asians, and on average, whites. So there's a clear disparity there. Is that racism? Between who and who? uh asians and uh, white people no because the reason why asians have more wealth is because they immigrated not because the country yeah i i understand that but you're but if your that idea would be, that... that would be like a legitimate extenuating circumstance though like that like for example if like there the richest man in the world was like a mongolian dude and then he entered the country and then we look at the stats for mongolians and suddenly like their net wealth spikes per capita like, yeah, that wouldn't but, be yeah, an indication the country got less outlier. racist towards Mongolian people, you know? No, I, I agree, but that's not the type of outlier we're seeing here, though. You know, it's, it is consistent and it is across the board. And yes, it is. A strong part of it is due to we're selecting also, for highly educated uh, and, like, immigrants. Yeah, wait. Also, is this even true with, like, Asian people or whatever? I'm looking up some data right now in the Federal Reserve, and it seems like now it's Black and Hispanic people who represent the huge, huge, huge majority of minorities in this country, racial minorities, are, have a fraction of the median and mean net worth of white people. And the yes. other group, which is all non-black Hispanic white people, is still like half of what white people have. Uh, um, the, the, that data may not be including like Asians particularly or ethnicity. Uh, well, know, it's in, in the other, isn't it? Just keep in mind that, like, I um, don't know because, yeah, fair enough. I'm seeing that most of the data I have seen has shown, like, East and South Asians, you know, Indian Asians, as in, like, you know, India, and like, you know, yeah. Chinese but what about Asians. like all Asians? Not, I, not just. That's like, why I agree. We should talk about averages. Otherwise, you know, we can say the same thing about white people. Right, why well, are we talking about like white people on as average, a monolithic white group do, when forty percent? On yeah, average, I'm, white people but, do way, way, way better than like the other large average sure. groups. You can start subselecting sure. for smaller groups if you sure, want. But 40% but... of white people are still in poverty. I'm not, yeah, but so... I'm not saying they're not. I, I, no, critical race theory doesn't mean like ignoring white poverty. It, it just, I understand. It's just, yeah, it's just an acknowledgement of the biases in our system. Um, perceived biases is what I would say. I mean, I, um, and we, clearly, wait, just, okay, no, just to be no, clear, we talk about that. these biases and you can't refute them. The, the economic biases, redlining you've acknowledged, which is as bad now as it was in the 50s, the biases in um, educational attainment or in criminal justice. I mean, these biases exist. Okay. Um, yes. If you're using biases in that word or in that term, yes, they exist. I thought you were saying... It seems like you're saying that these disparities are evidence of bias, which I would say that is perceived. Whether those uh, disparities exist and are systemic, yes. Well, what would but cause I'd say then, a disparity like that if not bias? Well, again, it could be lots of things, um, but, but okay. So then you're saying like what implicit bias is? The cause of these things, basically, no, historical bias towards... for the most part. But implicit, bias. Okay. implicit bias does so, still have a huge outcome. Yeah. With okay, I'm sorry. I'm, my, stuff. my definition of bias is a little bit different than yours. I'm using it more of like the actual attitude somebody has towards somebody. Not. Yeah, but that's that's just... one of the way that is. So what you just said right there is a, one of the components of white supremacy. The idea that like um, racial biases can only be made manifest through explicit racial bias like anything below explicit racial bias is like like below the surface it's invisible you know? yes and that's why it's dangerous to make assumptions about implicit bias but we're not making well implicit just means implicit not explicit but we're not even talking about implicit bias for the most part we're talking about historical trends there's plenty of data sure. to indicate implicit bias is still a problem though people tend to view black people as more threatening just like flat out you know yeah yeah i have disagreements with the implicit bias testing but that's a different thing i completely you know agree that implicit bias is a real thing I but mean, um sorry go ahead uh, it's certain it's the data on the existence of implicit bias on those subjects is pretty overwhelming by the way just really quick i'm reading the stuff on the ethnic studies model curriculum for the california department of education and yeah a lot of this seems okay to me this is the section on guiding outcomes. Like, what outcomes do you want from these lessons, you know? The pursuit of justice and equality. 
What is justice? Yeah, what is injustice? How do people's cultures, experiences, and histories influence how they understand and apply these terms? What is equity and equality? Discriminatory treatment? Uh, how can individuals or groups overcome and dismantle systemic discrimination and marginalize, uh, marginalization, including systemic racism? Um, working towards greater inclusivity, further self-understanding, developing a better understanding of others. It mostly seems like pretty cool. Recognizing intersectionality, yeah, was, that's a class focus right there. Intersectionality includes class. Yeah, and it explores a lot of the themes of critical race theory in general. So, yeah, just, um, I don't know. It seems pretty okay. I, like, I would, I would have loved to have gotten a class like this in high school, you know? Um, yeah, un un that. Unless, like, they take the class and it's like, all white people are evil, you know, or like that yeah, kind of stuff. That, that's but... what I'm worried about to an extent, because if you look at chapter four, or if you look at chapter three, it'll give you like a broad outline of like what the courses would be talking about. Chapter four gives you even more detail. Mm -hmm. And like chapter six basically gives you schools and how it's implemented. Just what should I be outraged and, about here while well, looking for this? Well, you shouldn't be outraged at all. You, you, you know, want kids to learn critical theory. I don't. Um, so that's probably the reason. And it's not that, okay, it's not that I don't. I think for people who are not academics, this type of lens will ultimately lead to prejudice towards any dominant group. And I feel that will be the case probably because of the way it's taught. Anti-white you know, racism? But it could be any dominant group. Hasn't this no, always no, it, been? It doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be even racism. It, it doesn't have to be anti-white racism. It could just be animosity. But hasn't this always been like the claim of right-leaning people? Like, you can't fight back against racism. That'll make you anti-white racist. Like, this is the real racism now. But they said that back like well, listen, sixty I, years I ago too. In, I don't believe in reverse racism. Racism is racism. If you do racism towards any group, that is still racist, regardless if it's dominant or. Uh, minority group yeah so, i'm just i'm just saying it seems like like i don't know pursuit of justice and equity further self-understanding developing a better understanding of others if your argument is that like teaching kids yeah, that society up. is racist will make them resentful of white people I, I, no, it I, depends I, how they do it like we're told that we can't even be necessarily saying the words china and covid in the same sentence because by connecting a place and connecting like a disease can potentially create um you know stereotyping and i have, um, I have literally who, never heard that who has made that claim uh, no, who i mean the, the who world, has said world, that the term should be the novel coronavirus or COVID 19 no, no, not the they, chinese they asked, flu or the, the yes flu. they said that and they also had one before that was saying we should stop connecting names uh diseases to that's, uh, places that's been who policy for like 50 years Okay, um, and and my, my point my point is why that's is because they don't see people. No, but when you connect um, when you connect certain ideals and uh, privileges to a concept called whiteness, and you say that anybody who is white and does not have the critical consciousness that we do, they are perpetuating like racism or white supremacy. Then you are good chance going to be building animosity. I just don't think so. By the way, like. You, but listen, would you understand like, like, I, like I just say, just to be like, clear? You know, I just, just if you're worried about people developing animosity, just keep in mind most black and brown people already know a lot of these lessons because they've been taught it by life experience, and they already have that animosity in large part because they don't feel like their understanding of the world is being recognized. I, I okay, like yeah, this. I this is a little bit more subjective. I just need to be like clear about this, okay? Black people growing up in America already know. That this is a biased country against them. They like this is overwhelmingly known by them. What fucks them up, especially when they're young, is that people pretend that it's not. Okay, I was like white in high school and sitting down for history class and being taught about the Great American Dream was great and all for me. But if I was a black kid and I knew, like I knew this was bullshit, that would be way more likely to develop animosity for me than being taught some of these lessons. You know. It, it must be incredibly frustrating to know that this country is racially biased, but to have this happy face put on every time you go to school and learn about any of it. At least this stuff puts it out in the open. If there's animosity, then okay, there always has been. Uh, it's not great that there is any, yeah, but, but it, better okay, I, I animosity just, in education. Maybe. I, I just don't feel like the information is necessarily rigorous enough or is going to be taught properly. I think more likely than not, when they are actually 
talking about like uh, this stuff in class is going to lead to, okay, what is the dominant group? We can say white supremacy. What are the narratives that they give about uh, whites uh, to the populace that perpetuates white supremacy and keeps them dominant? Okay, they'll say individualism, meritocracy, colorblindness. Now, my issue here is not saying that these ideas are flawed. Is My issue is saying that these ideas are, uh, I guess, white supremacist or perpetuate white supremacy. Because you know, for one thing, I think these liberal ideas are are definitely not that. I think you can which, which ideas are not these? white supremacy, meritocracy, individualism, and colorblindness. A colorblind, at, at the used... very least, colorblindness and meritocracy are both very explicitly used to promote white supremacy. Do you have any idea yeah, how often? Also, prom yeah, but it is also used to promote, like again, liberal values and a non. Like, and, and that's still the wait, hold on, wait, wait, just because, wait, so, oh, wait, hold on, okay. If anyone ahead, believes this country is a meritocracy, they are wrong for a number of reasons. So I don't care if there are defensible yeah, invocations I... of the idea. To claim that okay. America is a meritocracy, this has been a time-honored technique of invalidating black people by essentially saying that the only reason they experience what they experience is because uh, they have failed that they had a shot and they failed it. Why are black people poor? Well, they suck. That's why it's their culture. Yes, I, the, and the, the myth I of meritocracy that. is overwhelmingly used to suppress the poor and to suppress I, racial minorities. Okay, yes, but that's the thing. We don't have to be teaching the myth of meritocracy. We can, we can teach that as, it is an ideal and one that we are striving towards, but one that due to the different equitable positions or that people are born in, or inequitable, my sorry, inequitable positions, that it is not, uh, there's no true meritocracy. But that's not true. That's very really no. different. Well, well, but, then, but then you're, the only thing you're advocating for then is just the explicit removal of useful information. The knowledge, the knowledge that the myth of white supremacy has often been used to, um, to suppress like. Yeah, and the, I'm not the... saying we can't teach that either. I'm saying that this concept in general is white supremacy. And, and, and so, or if somebody pushes this concept, they are pushing white supremacy. If, if, well, I think hold on, wait, wait, but you're, be, you're being essentialist then and you're ascribing the essentialism to them. So, the, the, so what you're saying then is um, the statement, uh, uh, why does my stream keep cutting out? Jesus. Look, I don't think that every uh, attempt to teach children about how meritocracy has been used to, um, to racist ends is then uh, going to turn around and be like, um, it's then going to be turned around and be used in a, um, oh God, what is this item? Hold on. No worries. Jar of wisps. Okay. Uh, I personally have item? a bigger issue with colorblindness than I do meritocracy. Okay. Uh, I mean, uh, colorblind. Color color so, okay. Okay. So I'm, I'm sorry. I'm super, super out of it. Um, okay. No worries. The problem with meritocracy and colorblindness, it's not that any person who uses these terms are racist. It's just that these constructs have been used historically to reaffirm racially biased outcomes. So I 100% I I agree. So here's a lesson that I would say is, okay, meritocracy historically is a term and a concept that have been used to justify and to reinforce the suppression of people of color. Um, what I would not agree with is anyone who uses these terms is racist. Uh, I would not agree with that lesson. If that lesson was to be made, I think it would be highly reductive. Uh, that is what I would, that's the yeah, line that, that I would draw. Yeah. That's half my fear about some of these programs is I fear that they're going to be very reductive. And I think a lot of them should be uh, waiting till college. But I understand that they want to get people early. And I don't mean that in a conspiratorial sense. I mean, by building a critical consciousness at a young age, you can help, help people get out of that mindset quicker. You know, at least that would be their belief. So I understand. And from that, I'm worried that the lesson plans that they will have will ultimately be overgeneralized and reductive. Same thing with colorblindness. I think, I fear, I don't know, uh, at least, you know, if you look at some of the schools, the private schools in New York that has all the drama that Rufo has talked about and, you know, familiar. the Christ Church School. You know, the like Christ Church School, basically the... Uh, the principal was caught on tape saying we are demonizing white students. We are telling them uh, 
they are bad because of the way they were, uh, or because of the color of the skin that they were born with. I'm They're not basically... familiar with that, but it's it's probably bad, and they probably shouldn't do that. Yes, okay, and my worry is this is the type of stuff that will be used or will be talked about when we talk about um, like critical theory or teach critical theory in schools. Particularly, the reason I feel this is because their goal is specific, like specifically to be like the difficulty you know, creating that I activists. have here. The difficulty that I have here is it feels like like there are concepts that are being taught improperly, but then the people who complain about those concepts being taught improperly are also people who disagree with more fundamental truths that I have. You know, I I even if this stuff is done inelegantly, I'm still happy that children are being taught stuff like this because it's real and it's important and it affects our lives. If they're it taught poorly, it. that's unfortunate. Like legitimately unfortunate. I don't want yes. it to be taught poorly. But I don't think that the object lesson here is to like buy into the fear um, that like it's all going to be taught poorly and it's going to manifest bias against white people and so on and so forth. You know, I, it's not just the manifesting bias against white people, but I guess I think it also be bad for black people in a number of ways, uh, at least in some of the ways that is being implemented in some places. But well, like, um, how, like, couldn't we just like disagree with the specific implementation in some cases? The idea yes, that, like, uh, sure. teaching white kids about white supremacy is bad. I mean, that's been taught before. It's not like that's new. Yeah, I completely agree. But there's a difference between teaching them about white supremacy and the KKK and even systemic but racism. It's, mo it's and... modern, though. It's it, White supremacy is a yes, modern yeah, thing, yeah. though. I, I understand that. I understand that. But my point is a lot of this stuff, when we are talking about it, it is basically armchair philosophizing. You know, it is... Taking basically, you know, Foucault and Gramsci and their ideas and like Mercuse and basically saying, oh, from these ideas, these guys, you know, we've, uh, whites or the dominant group has created the narratives that'll most benefit them because they own like the power. And because but if they have all the power, the they can create plan, the knowledge. The lesson plan that you showed me looked fine. The one from well, California. Uh, well, you didn't look at necessarily the actual lesson plan. You're just reading like the outline, but there are parts of the outline I thought uh, were, I'd say, objectionable, particularly. And again, it, it depends. Well, let's think. We already have a fundamental disagreement, and I don't believe that this country's, I guess, hegemony is white supremacy. I think it, it used to be, and I think there's a little bit there, but it's been less and less and less and less. And, uh, now, what but basically the average race theorists and the average have... the last presidential election was like a moratorium on white fear of non-white people. Like President Trump mostly rallied around fear of BLM burning down cities. Yeah, the okay, last yeah, election, I... the most recent huge political event that took place, was explicitly. Uh, a battle between advocates for white supremacy and um, and and I pe people who I guess aren't, you know. Oh, I I see what you're framing there. I don't necessarily agree with it, but I I do 100% see where you're coming from. Again, but it's probably just because I dislike this type of definition of white supremacy. I do see what you're saying. He did completely use uh, like you know, white rage if you want to call it that, and uh, white resentment, and like fear. He did fuel racism. I cannot deny that one bit. That is all true. Um, yeah, it just seems I mean, it's clear, like if they're big enough issues that they can define a presidential election, I feel like they're probably uh, worth that, teaching to kids. Again, I, I feel like that is just confirmation bias and post hoc reasoning. And uh, how's that? And post hoc I, reasoning I feel... is arriving at a conclusion and then justifying it after. I promise you yeah. that my belief that children should be taught issues like this is presently and directly informed by the political climate of our era it is very okay, much I, an immediate I, thing that's yeah that's not necessarily what i meant but um that's all right so okay another issue i might have in terms of the uh is are they going to be teaching this as it is the truth or are they going to be teaching it as is this one perspective i mean it's and called a I, theory right I, I would hope it's being i mean if it's being taught in class it, it, it's it's just the way that lessons like this tend to get taught in high school it's like and here's the lesson plan for the day 
So what did we learn today, kids? Oh, we learned this and that. It, it, I feel like it's not usually um, an environment where people are getting like hardcore lectured on the objective and empirical importance of the lesson plan in all contexts. At least when I was being taught sociology stuff, it wasn't like um, it wasn't like this is the only way of looking at things. It was just like you have to understand this way of looking at things. I, I hope that is how they will continue to do it. You know, uh, I was very disappointed in the California school system when I moved here. I was so like very shocked that Missouri had a much better one, and maybe that colored my you know, per perception on it and makes me biased. But maybe. I do fear. Go ahead. No, I just said maybe. I'm just affirming here. Oh, okay. All right. And um, so I feel that that they will be teaching that it is the case because again, like. You think it is the case. I don't think it's the case. I worry that they will only be taking it, it from your angle and ignoring people that don't. And the reason I worry about that is because the way that critical race pedagogy is like learned, it's it's very cultish in a way, as in that how, they how? You, tend to... The, you keep I'll, making I'll claims how. I'll like that. How. Well, it's just, it has I'll to be explain. quick, though, because we, we've been talking for like, it feels like two hours, and I have to... Um... It, I'd like to win at least one video game if I could. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. But uh, no, I, I just want to because it seems like you make a lot of really strong claims um, that it's cult-like, yeah. you know, that it will, like, sow uh, uh, resentment, that it will encourage people to not work as hard because they feel the system is rigged against them anyway. But then when we back up and actually talk about the particulars, it's mostly like, um... I just don't really have faith that they'll do this responsibly, you know? Like, oh, I no, feel I, like this could I, be I, biased. I can... I can explain why, and I can even, you know, give you like my citations where it makes me think this way, because at least what I've seen with critical race theories in particular, the way that their tenets are constructed, you know, the way that they use um, standpoint theory. But we're looking. With, we, I looked at the lesson thing. It looked fine. I, I like he, but, again. I don't know what I mean by critical race theory because critical race theory is an academic, uh, a collegiate theory. It's not. Whatever is more than that. Whatever it, the kids are going to be learning is not the same stuff that's going to be in the textbooks of like. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. They're not going to be reading about Derek Bell and like interest convergence and how that, uh, you know, has to do with Brown versus Board of Education. They'll be learning the tenets, and if you look through the plan, that is what you will be seeing. They'll be what, talking about tenets of crit critical race theory. But like, like what? You know, that, that there's a bias in our systems, you know. That that is not quite. The, Critical race theory goes so much further. They, you know, the whole idea that uh, racism is is basically the hegemony. It is normal. It is not aberrational. It is uh, true. in yeah. our systems. And yes, it, you say it's true. It's also not just in our systems. Not it is also in our culture. And it is the way very way we think, the very way we speak. Yeah, yeah, uh, for sure. This is how. Yes. Okay. So you believe that? I think this is all unfalsifiable. I wouldn't say nonsense because I, I do think wait, that there's why, value. So wait, in, why do you think um, why do you think it's so common the way black people talk A A V E? Why do people call that like ghetto talk? Because they associate black people with uh, ghettos. Yeah. Okay. Right. Do you, yes. Do you think there might be like an element of racism in the way we construct our our language? Or how about how about in the fact that the okay, language, yeah. the oh, slang, well. the slang terms that we use right now, like calling people like dog, for example, like what's up, dog? You know, twenty yeah. years ago, if you use that kind of language, that's like hoodlum language, that's like street yeah. language. Nowadays, it's been incorporated now that white people use it, but that wasn't always the case. It used to be that it was a pretty expressly like impolite or like frowned upon thing. A lot of slang language isn't just slang because it's like uh, the hip kids are using it. It's slang because the hip kids took it from black people. So, like, that would be a way in which even the way we speak is influenced by racism. But this doesn't inspire in me a sense of guilt. My understanding of what proper speech is is influenced by white cultural standards, you know? When I think of, like, how would I speak to a, a professional... I think of speaking the way that, like, a proper, like, white guy is taught to speak in that environment, you know? 
but yeah, okay, in, sure. right but like in in like black communities while there is still a degree of formalism they may their formal language might be different because they have a different like a uh, dialect like aave it's a different dialect so but if they spoke that way to one of our professionals they might be considered unprofessional for doing so it's this really yes. complicated net of code switching that influences even the subtlest nuances of our behavior and that's yes, and I'm not, and and i'm not denying that culture has an effect on the way we think uh, and that the way we speak and very well dictates like the the thoughts and knowledge as we but can this know is racism in culture though it's not just culture it's like this is racial bias in the culture it's not like it just happened to be this way the reason it is this way is pretty expressly because people favored uh, or supremacy if you will a white uh, a bias on well, these issues that seems to be changing at least in terms of what you're saying with slang as in you know the slang that we normally attribute with uh, black people or particularly black uh, people in the ghetto is you know i would you would say it's gone mainstream you, you would, i'm sure you would agree with that uh yeah once white people started using it once like white gay okay, people sure, started copying yeah black women but if the process by which white linguistics are normalized is through the appropriation of white people doesn't that also kind of indicate a problem uh, like why is black people using yes. it for themselves not enough you know like why why did the legitimacy have to come from white people it's just like kind of weird to think about you know okay no i i, I do see your point there um i just don't know if that is representative of like deeply rooted like white supremacy I, I think that very well just could be the case with any uh dominant majority well, sure, know, but in any I mean, society well there and are yeah, really... uh minority groups in our country that uh whose mannerisms uh you know aren't treated unfavorably um yeah sure and there are some that are, some that aren't, it, it all depends, you know, it's not necessarily race-based, uh, like, for example, like Indian culture, there's a lot of things that we, like, you know, uh, like white people would see and not, like, look at it favorably, other things they would, maybe because it's more similar to their culture. I feel like just trying to separate it in terms of race and who the dominant group is uh, a little bit reductionist. I, I mean, it tends to produce the the appropriate understanding pretty often though doesn't it you know it's also it's not so much like um it's it's more descriptive and analytical than it is um predictive you know you wouldn't go like oh here's a mystery society and here are the dominant groups now who is oppressed based on this abstract it's more about looking at the society we have today and trying to see the patterns underneath the existing biases which are pretty favorable towards white people to say pleased <laughs> Anyway, I, I feel like we're circling on this for a while, which I don't generally mind, but I will literally never succeed in uh, in, in, in playing this unless I, I hunker down and concentrate on it. Um, Is it all right if we continue the discussion another time? There's actually a lot of different stuff. I actually have a lot of different sources and quotes from critical race theories, and I did actually want to go through some of the classes with you. I guess I, I wasn't prepared enough. I didn't have it all in front of me, so I just pulled through a lot of documents. So that was my fault. Is That's it alright okay. if you can potentially continue another time? I am completely or... unprepared. I never ever plan out anything like that, but if you show up again during a future video game stream, we can continue the conversation. Okay. I'd be happy to. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Yeah. And uh, listen, like you, uh, I've talked a lot about uh, people about it. You, you are pretty convincing. I still you. disagree. I, I'll be honest. I, I was stoned, so I'm that I'm not the most eloquent as I could have been. That's okay. Uh, that means next, next time you got to kick my ass, though. Okay. Yeah, well, next time I'll come sober and I'll come prepared. Thank you for right. coming on. Well, and thank you for having me. You have Be a great day and enjoy your game. Be well.